Hi, I'm Matt Dave, and my favorite band is Bring Me the Horizon. I'm something of a late fan. Um, I only really got into Bring Me the Horizon once I heard a friend play Go to Hell for Heaven's Sake on his phone, and I begged him to let me borrow his CD, and after that I got a copy of Sympaternal for myself. And after Sempaternal, the next major release was the single Drown, along with another single called Don't Look Down by Orifice Volgatron. Um, but Drown... Drown changed everything. Part 1, what Drown meant to the fans. So Bring Me the Horizon have always kind of been a controversial band in the middle of the core sphere and that's less because of who they were as a band and more because of that they were just a metalcore band um, metalcore has always kind of had this negative connotation to it uh, and you know it's for some people it's just the simplicity of the music or the auto-tuned vocals, or the crab core stances, or for some it's just that there's any clean singing at all. But people kind of hated Bring Me the Horizon, and they hated the fans, especially the teenage girl fans. For a metalcore band to rise to the top of the charts like Bring Me the Horizon did would be like if Nickelback released three hit albums back to back and just stayed at the top of the charts. The funny thing is though that Bring Me the Horizon haven't always been a metalcore band. They actually started out their career as a deathcore band with one EP and one full release. It's kind of debatable whether or not Suicide Season is more of a deathcore or metalcore album. Um, I tend to err on the side of Suicide Season is more of a metalcore album. It, it definitely has more of the feeling of metalcore rather than the more raw and brutal sound of Count Your Blessings. The first really big song that Bring Me the Horizon released was Pray for Plagues. And if you put Pray for Plagues and Drown right next to each other, it's night and day. You can barely tell it's the same band. One is a radio rock stadium anthem that's uh, clean it's easy to sing it's something that you know your fans are gonna know and the other is this grimy sludgy edgy raw unfiltered deathcore banger uh, i'm pretty sure that pray for plagues as a song has more pick squeals than like everything Bring Me the Horizon has released up to and including ammo from about when Sempaternal was released. And you know what, I unironically like Pray for Plagues. Despite some misogynistic lyrics and despite some rough edges, I love Pray for Plagues. It represents something really core to being a Bring Me the Horizon band, and it's something of a litmus test, you know? Liking Pray for Plagues is kind of like seeing the potential in Bring Me the Horizon and what they could be. And it's also just liking Bring Me the Horizon at their most raw and unfiltered second only to maybe their very first EP. Drown is different. Drown is a radio rock anthem. It's easy to listen to. It's easy to learn. It's something that you know your fans will know.
And unlike the unfiltered rage in Pray for Plagues, Drown is this upbeat rock song about begging the people around you to keep you afloat when you're going through your darkest days. It's about how deep you can sink and admitting to yourself that you need help if you're going to make it. And songs about mental health tend to resonate with the metalcore audience really strongly. Um, a lot of us struggle with anxiety and depression, and it's really hard to listen to Drown and not feel that resonate with your own struggles. The biggest thing about Drown, though, is that it is very safe as a song. And when you're a metalcore band, safe is kind of the lost thing you want to be. Part 2. What Drown meant to the band. Drown did so well that what was supposed to be a one-off song just to tide over the fans while Bring Me the Horizon was working on their next big release, which would be That's the Spirit, um, that song became instrumental in defining the sound of That's the Spirit. And I don't think you can really talk about the sound of Bring Me the Horizon without also talking about Jordan Fish. So somewhere in the writing process of Sempaternal, Jordan Fish joined on as a permanent member while Jonah Weinhofen left the band rather unamicably. Uh, they haven't really disclosed the reason for Jonah's departure, but a Reddit AMA has revealed that there was kind of a lot of bad blood. And I can't really speak to how accurate this next bit is. This is mostly just an educated guess on my part. But you get the feeling that Jordan Fish didn't really want to rock the boat during the writing of Sempaternal. Like, he was the keyboardist in a metalcore band, and he sort of just filled up the sound space while the rest of the guys did all of the flashy metalcore stuff. However, what I think is pretty undeniable is that Jordan Fish is really talented musically. I'd even go as far as to say is that he might be the most talented person in Bring Me the Horizon. So keep that in mind when I tell you this next part. Um, somewhere before the release of That's the Spirit, um, Ollie develops a ketamine addiction that he goes into rehab for somewhere between the start of the writing of Sempaternal and before the release of That's the Spirit. Walking out of rehab, Ollie admits that he's done screaming, or rather, he no longer really feels like he wants to do it. He changed as a person, he grew as a person, but he also changed his attitude towards his career as a vocalist. He now wants to sing more, and more than he already had on Sempaternal. So at this point, it's been clearly solidified that no one in Bring Me the Horizon really wants to do metalcore anymore, and the lost guy that wanted to do metalcore left and did metalcore with his old band. And so out of the mix of Jordan Fish as a new member, um, post Sempaternal when he's more comfortable with the band, Ollie is out of rehab and now wants to sing more, uh, and Jonah Weinhofen had left the band. 
out of all that comes Drown, and with Drown came a new Bring Me the Horizon. And that Bring Me the Horizon would eventually put out a goddamn pop album. Part 3, The Legacy of Drown. Ammo is the sixth Bring Me the Horizon album released in 2019, and it was released to pretty much universal acclaim from critics. Uh, it sold well, and a lot of people liked it, but a lot of longtime fans hated it. Remember how I said that Drown wasn't released very far off from another single called Don't Look Down? Don't Look Down was written in collaboration with Orifice Volgatron for the rescore of the 2011 film Drive. And Don't Look Down was pretty much panned. The odd thing is that Don't Look Down is a pretty natural evolution of the sound from Simp Eternal. It's electronic, it has a lot of catchy riffs, it's got some sing-screamy guttural vocals. Um, but Don't Look Down wasn't loved the way Drown was. And if the reception to those two tracks were reversed, I'm pretty sure Bring Me the Horizon's sixth album would have sounded a lot more like Of Mice and Men's Restoring Force. So in essence, what Drown did was pivot Bring Me the Horizon sound until they finally jumped the radio rock shark, which most rock and metal bands do eventually. I don't want to call it selling out, because I do think that there was genuine passion and creative talent behind the new music. While money is probably at least in part a motivator, I think it has more to do with where Bring Me The Horizon was in their career, who was in the band at the time, and how they wanted to align the music that they played more with their musical taste as people and you know no matter what fans think you can't be a band and release the same album seven times over you can't expect to have a career and that's just not how the music industry works stagnation like that would ultimately also disservice fans as well we don't want to hear seven albums that sound like they're one long album. We want to watch the band grow and change and develop as musicians and as songwriters. Um, we want to see them get better and experiment more. And at the end of the day, we also just want to like what comes out. Ammo wasn't an album that I enjoyed. I liked two or three singles, but after listening over the whole record two or three times, I came out with mostly a cold indifference. And that kind of sucks. It kind of sucks when your favorite band puts out a new album, and after two or three listens through, all you can think of was, meh, it was okay. I'm not gonna review the album here, but the short of it is that I thought it was a little bit forgettable, and one part of it I found just openly glib and obnoxious. It kinda sucks that the thing that I was so excited and the thing that I looked forward to for so long turned out to be just uneventful and unexciting once it was actually in my hands. And Drown enabled that. As much as I love Drown, a part of me also feels a small tinge of resentment towards it. Resentment towards the fact that Don't Look Down 
didn't get the love that it so rightfully deserves. On some internal level, I regret how I championed Drown, how I posted hashtags with the song, how many views I gave the song, and the eventual money I gave to the song when it came out. And I also know that that feeling is misplaced. It is fallacious. There was always going to be a pivot in style for Bring Me the Horizon, and Drown really just nudged it in a certain direction. If I'm brutally, totally honest with myself, it's probably far more likely that Ammo was influenced by 21 pilots, despite the fact that those guys are just better at handling a multi-genre, on-the-fly, changing album. And I don't resent Bring Me the Horizon for experimenting with that stuff. But Ammo just does feel so antithetical to the core of Bring Me the Horizon that it may as well be a different musical project. But Drown was also included in my second favorite Bring Me the Horizon album. I love that's the spirit, despite the fact that initially, I kind of had mixed feelings about it. I love Follow You. I genuinely think that Follow You is one of the best songs that Bring Me the Horizon has ever written. And that wouldn't have happened without Drown. But I also yearn to hear Bring Me the Horizon release another song like tell Slater not to wash his dick. I want to hear a song I love as much as Sleepwalking. I want to listen to Vision for the first time again and feel like I've just heard something profound, but also kind of like I want to murder someone in a mosh pit. And I would kill to hear a song as good as Chelsea Smile, written by Bring Me the Horizon in 2019. But I don't know if I'm ever going to get that. I do think that if Bring Me the Horizon goes on long enough, there's going to be a period where they're going to return to their roots. And I'll be there for that. I want to support that. I want to enjoy that record, and I want to quietly scream it to myself while I'm in the shower. But until then, all I could really do is listen to old Bring Me the Horizon with wistful nostalgia and try my best not to hate the new Bring Me the Horizon album and also just check in on Drown every now and then and relive the moment that Bring Me the Horizon was changed forever. And I guess I also hope that, after all of that, you might go check out old Bring Me the Horizon, and maybe you'll hear a little bit of what I was talking about. And I really hope that you hear the magic in the middle. <laughs>